Welcome, 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 to, welcome to Les Football Les... Monday podcast number four. And we back again and I've got Sins with me. Um, how's it going, man? How, how, how was the weekend? Well, um, yeah, things are things are going going all right, man. Weekend yeah. was so and so, yeah. man. I mean, yeah, you know when your team doesn't perform well, most of the time it can ruin your your weekend and your mood. So it was one of those of it was a good weekend, and then our team ruined our mood. So yeah, man. But uh, yeah, at least I'm the type of person who enjoys football in general. So. At times when you can watch a good a good game of football, even if it's not your team, it's always good. No, that there's a lot of football action uh, uh, on the weekend, and obviously during the week, um, there was Champions League action as well. And I think we already made predictions uh, as to who's gonna win, who's gonna draw, who's gonna lose. Um, Manchester United, obviously, I'll start with them before I move on to the other ones, the other games. Um, I knew I knew it was gonna be a draw because I knew for the fact that our manager is gonna approach this game in a defensive manner. I mean, we played a three-five-two formation. Uh, we played with wing backs against Atletico Madrid, and I don't know what we we're trying to do. And he admitted that, you know, um, he he got it wrong. In the beginning, because we we were like we we were humble, you know. In the beginning, I could not believe what I was watching. I was frustrating. Watch, I was highly frustrated watching that. You know what I'm saying? Like we couldn't even get the ball to our forwards. The the the, the gap between the midfielders and um and the strikers was 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 huge, man. Like so, usually our strikers and midfielders were isolated. No individual players were also isolated. Ronaldo was isolated. Pogba was isolated. Whenever they got the ball, there was like four people around them or three people around them. So, you know, um, yeah, man, what did you think about the game? Because I left that game pissed off. Well, I must agree with you when it comes to the first half. It was one hell of a first half. An unbelievable first half. It's like it wasn't Manchester. Like, I, like you, you know, when it comes to Manchester, it sounds like I ran out of words. What more should I say? Because it's always that thing. Uh, we've been complaining about one thing. I, I feel like most of us, Man United fans, have been complaining about one thing. Playing good football. At times you can forgive certain things when a team plays good football. Because you can say that you see what uh, the coach or the players or even the manager are trying to do. But when there seems to... It's like there's no identity. We don't know what we're doing. That's how the first half, the Champions League first half was. I was watching that game. I, I, I feel like I had the same feeling as you. Where I was like, I'm not understanding what we're playing. We could not pass the ball. There was, there was just a disconnect. Uh, looking at the attackers, the mid, the defenders. And worst of all, who got the goal score? Uh, who made the mistake for us to end up getting scored? I mean, I know that at times it seems like we always uh, are taking one player. But when you're the captain, like, that's what I'm saying. I run out of ways of what more to say. The positioning of even our captain. Before I talk about other defenders, because Shaw could have been there to try and avoid the situation. But the positioning of our own captain, the, the one who's supposed to be main centre-back, if you put it like that. But if you're the captain, you're supposed to lead your back four. One way or another, you don't have a choice. If you're leading the whole team, the, the back four is your first priority. If you cannot uh, lead your, your back four, it's the same as you, you won't be able to lead the mid or the attackers. Because majority of the majority of the time, you're with your back four. So it's like if you, that, like that game, the first half, I was really shocked. I, I, yeah, I don't even know what we played. I don't even know what we're trying to do. Atletico had our way with us. And if it was a better team, they could have scored four or even five goals. We could not respond. Every time we had the ball, your Fernandez, your Park were losing the ball. Mm. Imagine your mid, the one that is supposed to take the ball forward, loses the ball. 
Mm. And then you look at your center backs. Because even Varane, Varane, when the game started, he was very shaky. He was losing the ball. It's like he didn't know what he was supposed to do. There was even this mistake that, that, that he did when De Gea passed him the ball. And he did not know where the ball was. Mm. And when that happened, he then had to look around and then saw where the ball was. And then we were even close to even getting scored then. You know, so that's what I'm saying. If the leader of the back four can lead his back four when he sees that the mistake is, is, is going to be made, and I would even use an example of a proper back four with a good leader. Sergio Ramos was a proper back four with a good leader when when uh, both Varane and him were playing for Madrid. You would see that okay, both of them had mistakes in them, but because the one who's the leader is able to tell him, cover your space, do this. The way they played ahead and, and understanding, you know, because it's not like uh, Sergio Ramos didn't have mistakes or, or rash decisions. He did, but they were able to cover each other's mistakes. But now when it comes to Manchester and your Maguire, I don't know. I feel like it's that thing of I'm the leader. You don't tell me, I tell you. Because even when he makes the mistakes that he makes, you can see that certain defenders, let's say he's back for other players, they tell him, you were supposed to be here. You know, and this is the same mistake with the goal that was scored. You saw Lodi took the ball, crossed the ball in. And when the ball was crossed in, check where Maguire was. Maguire was just standing there. He was not close enough to either defend the ball or he was not even close enough to tell Shaw or whoever was closest to the person who scored, which was um Felix. Because that ball, like Felix is probably the shortest player. Uh, in the field when we play Champions League, if not maybe second shortest, but he was able to see the cross and, and and come and head in. So if the shortest player is able to come and score such an easy goal with his head, then what happens when let's say we have someone like Cristiano playing for the opposition team? You know, because that's that's one thing. When, when I bring in Cristiano, we then come back to the situation I always spoke about. If a team plays and they have Cristiano who can head a, a ball that you can cross almost any height, but you're not crossing those balls. How do you expect him to score? I remember in that same game, Cristiano raising his hand and complaining. Uh, I remember him saying, because I think they crossed about four, if not five balls at the same time, but not even one came close to where he was, or let me say close to his head. And I remember seeing him pointing and saying, one. And I can... Uh, assume or analyze what he was trying to say there on my own way by saying, he was complaining by saying, not even one cross came uh, towards my head. All the balls were, 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 were further, further away from him. It's like, if you have such a guy who can score with his head, how do you expect him to, 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 to score? Because I remember the ball went from Shaw, went all the way to the other side. It came back from one Pisaka, went all the way. You know, so the, the, they kept on pinging the balls, but not even one came to Cristiano's head. And it's like, okay, how do you expect such a guy to then score? So I was shocked to then see our second half being a, a different type of second half. You know, so I, like, and I, in that instance, right, we can blame the coach or we can blame the manager for how he set up the team when they started. But at the same time, we can definitely say we're blaming the players. I mean, how do you have uh, two different halves? And Benchez has been like that. Why? Why Ole was even the, the, the manager? How do we have two different halves? It's not like the, the the manager told you something different when you started the game. The game. When you started the game, he wanted to win. He wanted you guys to defend properly, and he wanted you to go for it. But then the way the players played in the first half, it wasn't that. It was something totally different. Where the coach can even say, "I don't know what they were doing." That's not what I told them. Because comes the second half, it's like now a whole different team. You would swear they changed the whole team. They substituted the whole team and then played different players. You would swear that's how it happened. But no, they're still the same players. But first half, they couldn't play. And like you were saying, the ball could not get to Cristiano. And that's what I always complain about because people would always have something to say. But if your main striker goes almost the whole game not getting passes to him, or being involved in play, how do you expect him to be warm enough uh, to actually score? W when we speak Kokas and say someone should have, so someone is playing, but they are not warm enough yet. 
Agashisi. You, you usually hear say that. Agashisi. So if Agashisi is one of those things, yeah, at times luck can also be on your side where you can actually score the goal easily even if you just came in. But if maybe you're the type of player who wants to get the feel of the game, you want to at least get one or two chances. At times, you get one chance and the goalkeeper uh, uh, is able to watch this defend the ball or you hit the pole. You, as a striker, you did your job. You took your shot, but the goalkeeper was there or you, you hit the pole. No player wishes to hit the pole, if I'm using that concept of hitting the pole. No player wishes to shoot and hit the pole. And no player wishes to shoot the ball and shoot it straight to the goalkeeper. But at times, the technique is bad or maybe you're not in the game as of yet because you just came in or the game just started. So if the whole game goes and the balls are not coming in for Cristiano to actually shoot, and then maybe second half, uh, one ch- chance decides to come in. He might score because it's Cristiano, but he might miss because like everyone else, he hasn't got the feel of the game to actually score. So, you know, looking at that game, yeah, we withdrew, which was good for us because we no longer have uh, away goals. So it ended as it started. So that's the good part about that, that, that uh, result. You know, we they're going to come to us uh, and everything will be as it started. It's, it's the same as it's just 0-0. Zero, zero. We start from, from, from bottom. So if Manchester can get there, we play a different game, play the game, how they finish the game, then maybe, you know, we might have something to, to speak about when it comes to us progressing to the next stage. But if not, yeah, because, yeah, coming to Manchester, I really, I really don't know how, yeah. And most times I'm confused. It's like, we don't know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. I'm confused. I don't know. I really don't even know what to say. Because, uh-huh. like, I look at the players, I'm like, okay, surely you know what the coach told you or the coaches told you. Surely you know what then the manager then told you as the final uh, go ahead on how to play. So when we get there, play a whole different game, I'm confused. I'm really confused because I look at a Chelsea. Chelsea were able to win a Champions League with a manager that had just come in. They were able to win a Champions League. They were able to get get, get uh, into the top four. So it us. I feel like it's egos that are preventing us to actually play how we should be playing. You know, so, yeah, like that Champions League game, it's just, we're just lucky that it ended how it ended. Atleti- if Atletico was like a Real Madrid or a PSG like it should have been, even though it was a, it was a tricky, you know, uh, draw that they did, if we had PSG, PSG would have buried us, buried us. Four or five. We would have went to a second leg saying, now nah, it's done. There's no coming back. Because we played crap first half. Second half, now we wanted to play. We wanted, I remember when one of the commentators was saying, now we want to scruffle like how Atletico is. We now want to play dirty, like where you're playing and you're showing, you know, you're determined to play. Because the way we played the first half, we just played. They were playing around us, play, playing through us. They were bumping us. They were doing everything that we know of an Atletico team. You know they want to play you hard. And it's like, we went into that game not knowing that Atletico is going to play as hard. Everyone knows how Atletico plays. Everyone knows how a, a Simeone team is going to play. They want to play you hard. If you're soft, you're going to cry. If you know how to play hard, you're going to scuffle and play hard. And we didn't. Only second half, we tried. And luckily for us, we were able to score a goal. Yeah, man, um, I hear you loud and clear, man. Um, a lot of your points were, you know, pre- like you're on point with a lot of things. And, you know, this team gives me that that vibe where, you know, you go into games, you don't know what to expect. But at the same time, it's come to a point where I know what to expect most of the time. And that's for us to be crap. Because... These players, they've been getting away with murder. I've always been saying it for the longest time. Even under Solskjaer. This, this didn't start under Regnick. This was also under Oligan and Solskjaer. These guys play one half. This is why sometimes I don't even bother. Um, sometimes I don't even watch the first half or something. Or, you know, or just pick a half to watch. Because we know they're going to show up for one half. And it's unprofessional. You cannot be playing football at this level and showing up for one half and expect to be paid. It's unacceptable at this level, you know. And these guys are professionals and they come in, they train every, almost every day. They're conditioned well. They've got fitness trainers. They've got personal trainers. 
they they have got dietitians. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we even we've even given them um, a psychology, a sports psychologist. You know, so what what is the problem? What is the problem here? Because something needs to be done. I think it's it's not a problem that can be easily fixed immediately. It's a problem that has to be eradicated from from ground down. You know what I'm saying? From the from the ground up, because I feel like it's it's we're just a toxic club at the moment. We're making every player look bad right now. You know, when I look at Sancho, man, I'm, I'm, you know, yes, he he might have improved in a couple of games, but he's still far, far away from the player he, he, he actually can be, or he was, should I say, before he came to Manchester United. You look at Cristiano Ronaldo, we've got people saying, um, we've got our own fan base even saying that the guy is finished at top level. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, these are the same folks. Um, you know, this, this is the thing. P- people don't understand. They'll be like, oh, the, the, stri- the strikers are the problems. What, what, what not? This is this and that. I'm telling you now, you bring Haaland, you bring Lewandowski into this team. You'll be hearing the same players, I mean, the same fans saying that they're finished because that's just how we, we are. We don't even create, we create chances, but we don't create them consistently. One game, you'll find that we'll have two or three good games out of 10, out of, out of 15, out of 16, where we create chances in those three games only. The rest of the games, we, don't, we barely do anything. So by the time these strikers... Um, or should I say, by the time Cristiano when we're creating chances for, for the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, they don't put it away. It's because of a lot of a lot of games of not been doing that um, consistently. You know, you know what I'm saying? We we play differently. You know, how do you expect us to be a consistent team when one game we play well, next game we don't we, we play one half, the other game it's both halves, the other game is one half, the other game we, we just crap throughout. You know, the other game we dominate from the first game, from the first minute till the last. You know, you you getting like men men that that's why they call us bipolar FC at the end of the day because you know that's that that's just how we are. You know, on the on the field of play and you know, Athletic. That's this is what I was afraid of because Celso was like, uh, "Are we going to beat them easy?" You know, I was like, "No, my guy, no ways." Do you, we we're just as bad, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we forget that we're just as bad as they are at the moment. But they actually they're still a bit better than us. They're still levels above us, and they proved it in that game. We still got guys like Maguire starting, you know, no matter what. And you know, <laughs> you know, the guy can't even defend a simple, you know, the, for Felix to even get a header there, it's unacceptable on all levels. You know, to get a head of you and get a header in, no. That was poor defending. He put it first and foremost, he put him on side. Secondly, <laughs> he couldn't even get to him enough. He couldn't even defend. You know what I'm saying? So problems are huge, my guy. And I feel like the mentality is down at the moment. I think Cristiano has checked out, to be honest. He's 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 on he's, his way he's out. He's on his way out. I wanna I wanna add something from what you were saying. So, like I've already said, at the end of the day, I'm a Cristiano Ronaldo fan, right? But I'm also a football fan. And I won't lie to you. I look at what our fan base is saying. And I'm really shocked and confused. No lie. Because it's like some of those people don't really watch the game. Like you said, how do you expect a striker to score when the ball never gets to him? I've, since Cristiano has gotten, uh, gotten back to, to Man United, I've seen so many games where the guy makes runs. And even mm. gets frustrated by the ball not coming to him. Because when I watch a game, I'm not only watching the one who has the ball. I'm even watching where the ball can go if someone is smart enough to see that pass. And that's what, that's what I usually say when I'm like, if you have people like Fred McTominay who never see a pass, you know, how do you expect to score? Because you can not play a game and in the mid, you only have one guy who can actually get the ball up front. And most times, looking at how we usually set up, we have Bruno as the one who can actually get the ball up front. Fred and McTominay, if they're the ones playing in the mid, they never hit that the type of pass. If there's a true pass that they can hit, they never do it. And like I said, that's why uh, Bruno ends up looking bad. I mean, I know he's also bad, but he ends up looking more bad because why? He's the one who wants to ping those balls up front for the strikers to score or for the wingers to get the ball. But your Fred, your McTominay, they don't. And you see, when Popper is playing, 
and there's Popa and Fernandez. You see the difference. You'll see Popa trying to ping those balls, you know, up front. There was I don't know if this was Champions League or the league game that we played, but I remember there's a ball that Popa pinged to to Fernandez. It's just that Fernandez was not quick enough to get the ball to put it down and score. But he was in the 18, right? And that's what I'm saying. When you have more than one guy in the center, you know, pinging those balls, it's a much better game, you know. Mm. But yeah, as I was saying, when it comes to the strikers, I'm really shocked because you hear people in our own fan base saying Cristiano is finished. This guy just played uh, when he was playing for, 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 what's this, Juventus. How many goals did that, that guy score on the last season? I think he scored about 40 or 50 goals that season. Scoring for mm. Juventus mm. and scoring for uh, what's this, Portugal. He scored 50 goals. And you can't tell me that in the space of a few months, someone can just be finished. There's a problem that has made him, like, and to the point you were making, we have also k- killed Cristiano. But some people, because they have their own agendas, they want to come and say, no, Cristiano is trash. We need to get a striker quickly. We had bloody Martial as our main number nine. What happened to Martial? Because we couldn't get the ball to him as the mid, mid or as the as the, as the, as the back four. Well, it doesn't mean that because we have back four, you don't get the ball up front. You've seen people like, like let me use Liverpool as an example. People like your uh, Arnold, people like Robertson, you know, people mm-hmm. like uh, even Van Dijk is able to ping the ball up front and the ball will get your money or the ball can even get your salah. I've seen Edison as a goalkeeper ping the, ping the ball up front. P- people like Edison ping the ball up front. Because it's not only the mid. Because if you look at Liverpool mid, like we said last time, I think the last podcast, they don't have the greatest mid. But those guys are able to pass. You know. And that's what happens. Martial ended up now, and now he's playing for Sevilla. He's loaned with Sevilla. Cavani is is our another striker, our other striker. What happened to him when he was not injured? He wasn't scoring those goals because we cannot get the ball to him. So now I'm confused why when, when it's Cristiano, it's now a whole different, you know, uh, analysis when it comes to football or how he needs, because it's, it's like, do you guys watch football? You cannot say one thing for someone else and then say, say another. A few days ago, I feel more, I think most of us saw when, when uh, Lukaku was the talking point, they said he only had, I think, five or six touches in the whole game, Right. But that's the thing. If the ball doesn't get to him, he's the striker. He cannot wish the ball to his feet. He cannot just go, I wish the ball was on my feet so I can score. The ball needs to get to him. And if the way the team is set up cannot get the ball to him, you can't expect him to score. Because right now people are saying Lukaku is trash. Well, we knew how Lukaku played. And that's why when he played for, for Inter, he played a whole different way. That's what allowed him to score. You know, but if the way that, let's say, uh, Chelsea is setting up now, they cannot get the ball to him the way they got the ball to him when he played for Inter, he won't score. And this is the same thing, if not a bit similar, uh, that is happening with Man United. The mid cannot get the ball to Cristiano. He ends up having to now go out from the 18 to seek for the ball. And then when I hear people in our own faint be saying, no, Cristiano is trash. Yeah, I understand. For example, the game we played, he had a pole. But for him to even get that ball and even the touch that... That's what I'm saying. People do, do not analyze games. They just look at it and say, it's Cristiano, he should be scoring that. Someone else wouldn't have, wouldn't have uh, been able to maneuver a move to actually get the ball to his right side to hit that ball. But because he was able, he got the ball, hit a skill or uh, trapped the ball nicely, got the ball to his right and short. And the ball hit the pole. Like I said, everyone can hit the pole. It's not every time that when you shoot, you score. And it's like, to me, how? Like, what is the fan base really watching? What are they watching? You see a game and you see how the game is going. The ball is not getting to the striker. He's not scoring because the ball is not getting to him. And like I've said, I've seen him even in the same game where we played against Watford or even Atletico. We, most of us saw him getting frustrated where he asked for the ball, like, here. He makes a certain run and the the ball is never delivered to him. So it's like, to me, I'm confused because... He's the, he, like, the, this is the one thing. I even saw a stat today. I knew the stat, but it's just that it was put out there where they said people are complaining about Cristiano, yet he's our leading goal scorer, both for Champions League 
end the league. What's happening with our other strikers then? What's happening with our wingers and our other strikers when a 37 year old is the one who's the leading goal scorer? Because I think they're saying he's finished. So if he's so finished, why is he the one who is the leading goal scorer for, for two competitions, league and uh, Champions League? He's the one who's leading, but yet he's the problem. The problems we have now with Man United, we had them long enough, long before Cristiano came back to Man United. But it's like people forget very easily. We lost the final because we couldn't score. Or we lost the final because we couldn't get the balls to the ones who should be scoring. And it's like, okay, cool. Make it make sense to me then. If you're saying he's the problem, how is he, is he the problem? When he is able to pass the ball to his other players and they are not able to score themselves, how is he the problem? Because if we check, Cristiano should have actually had more assists uh, than he has right now. Because I've seen him put Sancho through, Sancho misses. Mm-hmm. I've seen him put Bruno Fernandes, I don't know how many times, where he's one and only the goalkeeper, he misses. I- even the game with Whiteford, he crossed the ball to him. What did he do? He missed. I want to tell me that now you're going to blame Cristiano. How? And I know people are going to say, I'm saying what I'm saying because I'm a fan. But at the end of the day, if other strikers in the team are not able to score, then it means the problem is not with the strikers. Like you said, anyone, even if you go and get Haaland or get whoever or Lewandowski, it's still going to be the same because you can't really get the ball to them. So if you can't, how do you then expect the guy to score? And looking at the team that we have, it's even a, sh- a shocker that Cristiano has scored the number of goals that he scored. Like, like we can all agree that it's a shocker because we've been complaining. We cannot get the ball to Cristiano or if it's not Cristiano too, a striker who's playing up front. How many games did Cavani play when he could play when he was not injured? Where the ball w- wouldn't get to him and then he gets maybe one chance in a game. He misses because he was never in the game. There's, there's this chance that he missed, I remember, before he got injured. Ball was on top. He, he hit the ball. The ball hit the, the goalkeeper. Because it was like his only chance. Cristiano was in the bench that game. It's like, how do you expect a guy to score? And that's the one thing that pisses me off. People are quick to make decisions about, let's say, our certain strikers or even about Cristiano, because right now he's the main striker. And like we said, he's 37, as fit as he can be. But he cannot play three games in the space of a week. Because if you count out how long he's had time to rest, he's 37. He played three games in the space of a, a week. Champions League, leagues, and yet people are out there saying, yeah, he's out of it. You can see he's finished. And I'm like, but guys, Man United decided to go loan another striker. Yet you're going to tell me, a guy who, like, yeah, so I'm, yeah, it's confusing. Because here, Martial is all the way in Spain right now. We don't have Greenwood. And Rashford is trash. As young as he is, because people are now saying what they're saying, because obviously, Cristiano doesn't have the same pace as Rashford. But he's still able to bang more goals than him. So why are people not complaining about Rashford with the number of goals that he scored, with all the attributes that he has? He has pace, he has speed, uh, like he has everything that he needs to actually be better than he said right now, but he's not. So, and his 10 years or even, I don't know, 15, whatever years younger than him, why is he not performing? Because I think people are trying to, are trying to are now trying to put the blame uh, on one guy, like the one guy is... Uh, is, is able to just change up the mindsets of the, the whole 10 players alone. He can change the, the, the mindset of all the, the, the players. He can come with, with his winning mentality, but if the other players are not uh, willing to learn or do what they are supposed to do, nothing will change. So it's confusing cause, because he's the main striker, he's the one now who's getting all the blame. It's like, come on, guys. you know. And, and the, the thing is, we've had a main striker struggle. But because he's the main striker and his Cristiano Ronaldo, people are saying he's finished. And if he comes back to his form or goal scoring form, or they are now able to, go, to to pass him the ball and he starts scoring, banging more goals in, you'll hear what's going to happen. People are going to be like, no, uh, we're not saying he's finished. Which is, and it's like the guy five months ago, because people are forgetting when Cristiano got back to uh, Man United. They're forgetting that. Five, six months ago, he was with, uh, what's this? Juventus, he was still the leading goal scorer, even though he was now playing for Man United. And that tells you a lot. 
he was still the leading goal scorer of another team in another league while he was now playing for a new team in a new league. And it's like, okay, make it make sense. How is he finished in the space of five, six months? Because it's not like he just started being 36 or being on his stages when he got to Man United. You know, but Man United themselves as the team, they've frustrated the guy. And we've seen that where he, he will ask for a certain pass, crosses are not coming to his head. Because if you look at Man United, right, I, I doubt Cristiano has scored any header. I doubt. And like I said last podcast, when I was like, I know there's two headers that he got. But if a player goes the whole game without getting the, those type of passes and then he gets one or two, how do you expect him to score? And like I said, you might say, okay, I can blame him for missing maybe one of those chances in the, in the last games with his head. But you look at the chance in where he was standing. You know, but crosses are not coming to him. Imagine both our right back, left back, left wing, uh, what's this, and even right wing, they're not able to cross the ball. Imagine four players are not able to take the ball and cross. And who will you see trying to, to cross the ball to Cristiano? Uh, Bruno. If Bruno is on the side crossing the ball, then what is our right wing or our right back or left back or you know, a, a right way. What are they doing if Bruno is the one who, who now has to cross the ball to Cristiano? What are they doing? That's where the problem is. Because already we have more players, but there seems to be one or two players who are trying to get the ball to him. What are the other ones doing? But yet you're going to tell me you're blaming Cristiano. How? He's there 18 waiting. Instead, the ball gets pinged over his head. It's not like he can wish himself taller to get a ball that is way high. And that's where, the, like, it's fun. Like, I don't know, it's funny to me, but yeah. What can you say? It's Man United and egos. Because I feel that that's the main problem with Man United. It's the egos that are there. And they were led to continue ruling. And I feel like this most... Uh, it happened more with Ole. Because I remember you spoke about Ole. More of it happened with Ole. Because what was happening? Ole got there, an inexperienced manager, um, top players. He's supposed to be coaching top players. And, you know, obviously, if a player tells you no, I don't feel like playing there, or I don't feel like doing this. Because he knows he was lucky to get that type of a chance. And he is the one who allowed such a culture to grow and grow more in Whitman United. If there was, let's say, a Ragnik before Ole, I feel like such a culture would have been squashed a long time ago. But already it was, le- it was left to continue growing. And now we have people like Maguire feeling like they are bigger than the actual club. So, yeah, bro. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you've said a mouthful, a mouthful there. Um, I mean, take for example, this same Maguire, um, he was found to have leaked uh, the team team sheets and whatnot before the games, but he's still able to walk into the starting eleven the following day. You see, that's that's the problem. That's that's that that needs to be eradicated. Like, and I think it stems from from top management as well. If they don't have the balls to to um, eradicate problems like that, to, to get to uh, eliminate players who, who, who do not fit the culture of the club and also not giving players way too much power. I think that's what another problem is. They give them way too much power. That's why people are like, I'm sure Maguire has, um, has had, um, who's this, Matt Judge's um, nude photos. That's what I heard. Someone was like saying, I'm sure it, this is the reason why he doesn't get in trouble for anything. I mean, the guy is, he's got an ongoing case in Greece. And, you know, that's, that's funny. That's funny part. No one is ridiculing him. Not, not the press, not anything, you know. And, and then you get, um, you get guys like uh, Greenwood and all these other guys. I'm not saying what they did is right, but, you know, people are hypocrites. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they throw away Maguire's like case like it doesn't exist. But then, you know, they're on Greenwood's case. They're on, um, um, what you might call it, they're on Zuma's case as well. You see what I'm saying? Like the, narr- the narrative doesn't fit. Like I'm, I'm now trying to even imagine if someone like Pogba did any of those things where they'll all be here. They'll be on his neck immediately. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, you the know, club just, yeah, the club just needs... There's just something talking about that. I remember when the whole situation in Maguire happened. Because remember how Pock was always the one blamed for certain things, even if he was not even playing the game. Someone decided to, to, to throw a joke and be stereotypical. It was like, 
oh wow, this is all Pogba's fault. Pogba, it's Pogba's fault for uh, who's this for Maguire getting arrested for trying to bribe a police or even swinging at a police officer, you know. So they decided to, to say that, and it was funny, yeah, because every time, like you said, Maguire should have been suspended the same way uh, Green was suspended. But what happened? The club supported him because he's the he, he's the captain. He was bought for 80 million. Anyone else, if they were not English, because this was even mentioned, if he was not English, he would have been dealt with. But because he's English and and I don't like saying what I'm going to say now, uh, because he's English and he's also white. Because I, I don't like this thing of putting sort of like colorism when it comes to football, that if you're white or whatever. But when it comes to Man United, we've seen. And when I'm saying we've seen, uh, I remember even Juan Pisaka, there was a time where I think, I don't know what was happening with Juan Pisaka uh, regarding his girlfriend. I think he was caught cheating with someone else and he was even put in the bench after that talk was happening because there were pictures on the net of him with someone else. This was like last season or last two seasons, I don't know. And now people were speaking about he should be suspended, should be this. But Maguire went and swinged at a whole police officer and tried to bribe a whole police officer. He was not suspended. You know, and that's what I'm saying. What's happening with Greenwood now, like, like you were saying, we do not agree with what he's done. But they were quick with dealing with the situation. And number one, remember, he's English, but he's not white. And like I said, I don't like things. I'm saying this because I've seen so many instances where a, a different type of player will do something different. And then the way they will deal with the situation is whole, totally different. It's like with Martial. Martial, before he left for Sevilla, he, it was said that um, he didn't want to play. That's what the team put out, that he didn't want to play. It was a game that they said he didn't want to play. And then he came out on his Instagram and said, I'm always a professional. I'm never going to uh, say something or do something. You know, I'm always ready to play. But the team had put out information that he wants to, he doesn't want to play a game. And the same was done with Lingard. They said Lingard wants to, when he couldn't uh, go to Newcastle, when he wanted a loan to Newcastle, they came out and said, Lingard asked for a few days off to go home and clear his head. Lingard came out and said, no, I never said those words. The team told me to go take a few days off. You see, and that's what I'm saying. Why didn't they do the same with Maguire? Instead, Maguire did whatever he did, came back to the team and played. But instead, with these other players, you're told or you're forced. Actually, you're coerced. You're forced to go and take a few days off. You know, if something happens with Pogba, you'll see Pogba won't play. Because you saw even when Pogba was under Mourinho. We didn't know everything that was happening, but what, ha what started happening? They stripped his captaincy. He started not playing a few games. But what, is, what has happened with Maguire? Maguire is still the captain. He's still playing. It's only a few games where Maguire gets dropped. And if you check how Man United played uh, in the weekend with the defenders that we had, they played much better compared to when Maguire is in the team. We can say everything we want to play, but Varane and Lindelof played such a great game. Lindelof is better than Maguire. That's one thing I can tell you. And obviously, already we know Varane is better than Maguire. But Lindelof, because I remember there was a back then when they used to say, who do you put on the bench when you buy a new defender? Do you put Lindelof or Maguire? I honestly feel Maguire was one making Lindelof look bad. Because Maguire, who's this? Lindelof has a pass on him. Lindelof can ping a pass from where he is to the striker. I, I remember seeing him assist Rashford. You know, Lindelof can run through players. Remember when they played him? When Which game were we playing? I forgot which game. I think it was... Uh, let me remember. I think it might have been uh, EPL where they put him on the right back. Or was it Champions League? I don't remember. No, they put him on the right back. Yeah, it was the league. And he played in that new position. Like he, It, it wasn't his first time. He was able to run through players cross and it's like okay what does Maguire improve you know and we have better defenders outside Bailey's better than Maguire but he won't get put in and that's what usually pisses me off we have Townsavi playing in, in Italy right now for Napoli on loan he's better than Maguire Maguire is slow like that's the problem Maguire is so slow that 
some teams are now able to play through him. They see if you ping the ball like this and you run, he won't be able to catch you. And you, so, like, yeah, when it comes to this Maguire situation, I'm actually glad they put him on the bench for the weekend game and we actually got to see better defenders play and a clean sheet kept. Because I feel like we wouldn't have kept a clean sheet if Maguire was there. There's certain chances that Watford had that they could have found their way through if Maguire was in. Because Lindelof is, is not that quick, but he's quicker than Maguire. Varane is quick. You know, so I... Yeah, man. I... Hey, it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. Um, these people are, are not judged equally, unfortunately. And, it, you know, it's... Racism will always be in football. They talk about how they want to eradicate racism and whatnot in football. I just don't see it happening. You know, you can just see it with instances like these fans. These fans will preach, ah, you know, away with racism. But then, you know, it never leaves them because how they judge players, um, uh, how they look at players and what they did, like the skin color still matters. It's it's, it's still still a, a pandemic, you know. And yeah, man, um, obviously, you know, Man United just makes me sick. But, you know, um, obviously there was another game that played uh, in the Champions League. It was the Ajax and Benfica. Ajax are starting to slowly, 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 slowly crumble. I was watching, I was actually watching one of their, their fan channels and the supporters are actually pissed off now because they feel like now the players are, are being run into the ground. I feel like they don't have depth in their team. Um, and they look shaky against Benfica. I mean, conceding two goals, Ten Hag was pissed, you know. Um, but he said, What can he do? Because at the end of the day, he's got a thin squad and he's doing the best he can with what he has. And this is the guy linked with us at the end of the day as well. Because I heard Pochettino, um, might have, I think he is looking for a Spanish move rather than uh, going back to England. So, you know, I don't know how you feel about that. Are you with, with Ten Hag or you, you're still on the Pochettino uh, tree? Well, I was on the Pochettino train before they started talking about Ten Hag. And I won't lie to you, I don't want Pochettino. And my, my thing is, man, yeah, he's a good coach. And I'm looking at him when he was with Tottenham. I was able to get the players to play but he wasn't able to, to win any trophy with them, right? So the way he plays as well, I kind of feel like, eh, let's rather get a whole new coach. And here, here's my reasoning for that. I feel like if we go for a coach that we've seen how he plays, you know, I want something totally different, something that's going to be a shocker to the league, going to be a shocker to even our position teams. And let me use an example. Obviously, we knew about Pep when he came to England. But we didn't know about Pep coaching in England. And when he got to England, he was a whole different shock to most of the English teams. Because they knew how he played, but they didn't know how he was going to play and which players he was going to use. And when he got to Man City, you saw what he did. He's won so many trophies already. And then you look at someone like Klopp. That's what I'm saying. Something totally different to the league. Club, we knew about club, even though listen, some didn't know me know as much, but we knew about club in Germany with Dortmund and yara yara yara. But when you go to England, it was a whole different culture uh, shift, if you want to use those words. Because he was a German coach coming to England and was able to get the team to play his way. And we see how they're playing right now. And then you then look at someone like um the, the one coaching Chelsea. Same thing as, as well. A total different shift of, of a culture. So I wouldn't want Pochettino who wants coach. Because Pochettino coached Southampton and then went to Tottenham. So it's that thing of, no, get someone totally new. Someone who's going to come with a shift. Someone who's going to get to, let's say, Man United and use the youth more. Because our youth is actually great. But now it needs a, a coach who loves using the youth. And, We've seen with, with Ten Hag, uh, with Ajax, as much as right now, because I feel like one of the reasons Ajax is suffering right now is the thing of having their players bought, you know. Mm. So like you were saying, if the players have been run to the ground and you don't have 
better players in the bench to replace them with, you know, the season's going to catch up to them. Because I even saw with their league, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, their league. They lost 2-1, right? And I was kind of pissed off because I decided to bet and I included them in my bet. And they made me lose five grand. And I was like, what? Imagine, Ajax made me lose five grand. You know, so like I said, they're a good team, but now, like you said, they've been run down the ground. It's like, you know, there's no other players to... And that's the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to find a way to fit it in. But that's the same thing that, that, that is happening to, happening to Cristiano. He is now yeah. playing as the only main striker because Man United decided to loan who? Martial. Rashford is trash. Greenwood is no longer there because he's suspended. Uh, Cavani is injured. You know, because they, they could have totally given Cristiano a, a breather. And be like, you know what? For the game against Watford, maybe start, start on the bench. But they couldn't. Because which other striker did we have? Rashford is not a striker. He can't really play as a striker. You can try force to play him there, but he can't. They've played them before, the but So that's what I'm saying. Uh, when a player is tired, especially a player of that age, but yeah, like, like we said, we saw with Ajax. They are tired, but they don't have other good players outside to replace them with. You know, I feel like they might have more young players outside. So that's the type of guy I would want who would come. Because if you look at Man United, we have so many players that we've taken out to, to loans. Imagine if that type, that type of a guy ten comes in and is like, okay, cool. Um, Popper is leaving, uh, Mata is leaving, Matic is leaving, uh, maybe Henderson is leaving, and then he, other players also leave, your Lingard, your whatever. And then he brings in those young players, you know, because like I said, we have a lot of young players that are good. Ahmad is all, playing all the way in, in Scotland, uh, Ghana is playing in the championship, and he scored ju- during the uh, weekend, he scored a goal, you know. Mm-hmm. Those are the type of players that a coach like that can come in, take a few young players, and then add with whatever other players he wants to add with the players that we have now. If you want a, to- a, a, a total shift of the team and their mindset, remove all those old crocs. If it was me and I was able to do it, I feel like Maguire should be sold. Like, I won't lie to you. I feel like Maguire, because I, I, I don't see anything that Maguire can add to even a new coach that can come in. What can the guy add? I, I, don't, I don't see a reason of Maguire staying there. Because we've seen, since he came in, he's been making so many mistakes. So, I don't feel like a coach like, uh, you know, Ten Hag coming there would work properly with him. So, Pochettino, because I, I did hear those rumors that he wants to go to, I think both Madrid and, and, and Pochettino, they want each other. So, in my, yeah, from how I'm seeing it, I would like for him to go to Madrid. Go coach Madrid. And then we get a whole different coach that people think they know of him, but they don't really know of him. Because you don't know of him in England. You know of him in Netherlands. So if he comes in, yeah, I feel like he will bring something totally different. There will be a shock that can even... Uh, we could have a, a, a new figure in our hands with Ten Hag. That's what I feel. Because he, he's young as well. You know, compared to the coaches that we've had, he's young. So imagine getting a ten hag and then he gets there, you know. Because I mean, look at how long Klopp has been with Liverpool. If you get a coach like him, I truly feel we can do something great. But it's just that hey, with our board, I don't know if maybe we can keep Ralph, get ten hag. I don't know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, but yeah, I don't want Pochettino. No. Nope. Yeah, I don't think anyone. I, I think the majority of the fan base have, have already stated that they don't want Pochettino anywhere near Man United. And all of them are siding actually with Tanak because his style of football is what the fans want to see at the club. They also obviously want to see what kind of um, uh, what kind of um, system he's going to implement when he comes here. And as well as I think the thing. The thing is with Ten Hag, he's also not scared of benching players. If you're not playing well, he benches you. I remember with Ajax, he used to, um, he, he, he was benching the, the best players, you know, at, in, some, in some games instances. If they were not performing, he was benching. So I think that's what another factor why they like him. And yeah, I think he'll be, I think he'll, he'll, he'll be the one that they, they go for. Because there's no one else that, there's no other managerial name that has come out. Uh, in the in in the past few weeks, um, but yeah, 
Um, obviously, um, the Champions League, you know, the, sh- the, the shock result was the Salzburg and Bayern. Salzburg even almost won that game, you know. Um, and, you know, people, I know a lot of people were betting, betted for Bayern, I think, to beat Salzburg. I think, if anything, this was the easiest opposition that a Champions League team could get here in the last 16. So, yeah, man, uh, shout out to Salzburg, man. They, they, they played well. They were, they were very... Uh, they played with intensity, like they didn't let Bayern um, get the ball to, to Lewandowski or any of those. Lewandowski was stopped throughout that game. Um, and like m- mostly like they, 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 I think I feel like teams that do this, like that, that, that uh, go for the opposition, you know, Salzburg didn't sit back, you know, and then just defend the game. They went for Bayern and that's how you play against these teams. Bayern, the likes of Bayern, the likes of Man City, you know, you go for them. You go for them and you shake them out. And yeah, man, what did you think of the game? Did you man, did you catch it or were you watching the Inter Liverpool game? Um, there was a cut there, bro. You were saying? Oh, I'm saying uh, the Salzburg, did you manage to watch the game or did you, did you end up watching the Liverpool game and Inter Milan? I, I didn't really watch the game, I won't lie. But I saw the, res- the result and I was very shocked as well. Because it was like how with Bayern, it was the easiest thing for them to progress to the to the second uh, uh second second leg or second round. Because they could have just got there, smashed South Bank maybe five, and then rest other players for you know, as the league progresses and as the Champions League progresses. So I was also shocked because it was like how really? You know, but the problem with Bayern as well, I think at time is that aging squad. You know, because if you look mm-hmm. at, I remember there's a friend of mine who loves Bayern, and the one time I remember having an argument with him, saying to him, "Yeah, Bayern might have good players, but your squad is aging." And he's like, "No, but we still have a lot of young players that are on the bench." And I'm like, "Yeah, but they don't get to play much because they're on the bench." I mean, look at uh, Lewandowski; he's a great player, but if Certain teams are now able to see how Bayern plays and who to stop, who can get the ball to him. You know, it's easy to, to stop su- su- such a team. Because like I said, aging team, a team like Salzburg, there's like, you know what, we're going to go for you. You know, we're going to play. We're not going to sit back. Because I, I think with Bayern is that at times they're used to teams that are, they will just sit back and allow them to attack them, to come at them. But when you get there, you shock them. You play a system that, you know, will shock the, the, the team, shock the players. Because they're not trying to just watch you play or uh, through them. They are also playing. That's when you know, it gets a bit hard. Because maybe they might have undermined Salzburg. I don't know. Maybe they did. But yeah, like I said, their result was really shocking. Because I expected them to win. And just progress very easily to the next round. Yeah, well, but like, um, I don't see Bayern winning this, this Champions League. And the funny part is that I told this friend, this friend of mine last season when uh, Chelsea won it, I told him, you guys will never win a Champions League twice in a row. That won't happen. And really what I said happened. Because like I said, looking at Bayern, yeah, they're a good team. Like we always know them. But because of the aging squad, Lewandowski is still, still playing there. Mula still plays there. Uh, okay, Boateng is gone now. But if you look at the other players, it's that thing of not getting... A, a fresh players to change it up because who is this? Uh, the player that left and went to Madrid, um, forgot his name, but that type of situation where he felt he's been there for so long and he wanted to go experience a whole different team. And when he got to Madrid, he played like some, like how he never played for Bayern, he played great because, like I said, that changed. And this is the same thing that was supposed to happen with a uh, Bayern. They've played with because if you look at the players that they have, they are that type of a team when they have certain players they're gonna play them to the ground. I mean, they're great players, they they're there to play. You saw even with uh Robin Ribery, when those players still played there, you knew that you're always gonna find that player if they're not playing it's because they're injured, you know. But most of the time you find those players. So with smart coaches, they know how to stop certain players. The same way you'll hear a coach saying, I know how to stop Cristiano, for example, or I know how to stop Messi. If a team always plays a certain way and it's 
obvious to predict that they play like this. It's usually easier to try a uh, play through them or try cover certain, you know, strategies that the team might use. So we'll see. But knowing Bayern, I think they they'll still progress because they can just get their score one goal and defend defend good and then they go to the next round. Or we might get another shock again. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, man. Um, obviously, uh, we 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 made predictions for like the games that uh, took place obviously on Tuesday last week and Wednesday. Um, I think all of us agreed that Chelsea was gonna beat Lille. Um, Villarreal versus Juventus. Um, who, who said they were gonna win? Who said Juventus was gonna win? No, I did. I did. I said Juventus was going to win. Oh, okay, yeah, it was you. I said, I said it was gonna be a draw. I said it, and then so what did Celso say? No, Celso said Villarreal will win. Because remember when you said uh, Spanish teams are usually able to beat it- Italian teams, and because Alec mm-hmm. is the one who's also mm-hmm. coaching Villarreal, he had hopes for them winning the game. But Juventus side, they got there and smashed them. Eh? Mm. Yeah. So um. Okay. So far, I think it's two. It's two out of two for me, and then for you, it was like uh, it's one out of two. Celso is also one out of two for those for these two games in terms of prediction. And then the Benfica versus Ajax. Um. Who who was gonna win? Who 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 said we would, uh been or should I say Ajax was gonna win the game? Because I remember saying... I remember saying... I remember. No, I, I also said Ajax was going to win. Yeah, mm. I said Ajax was going to win. Yeah. Um, and then um, the main then... Yeah, I guess Man United... Against Atletico. Yes, I also said uh, Man United is winning, but uh, they chose to draw, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, hey, we, we have too much faith in these guys. Now I, say, I said it's a draw. I didn't... Like I honestly, like, did, not honestly did not see this. Yeah. I, I don't know what. I don't know what. You guys are too much. You guys are too much. Guys. Hey, I notice this thing was being a diehard supporter. You're always hopeful, but I, yeah. They, now they're stressing me. You see, when you're, you're your football team, that is supposed to be the team that distresses you after they say a long week or whatever. But they are the mm. ones stressing you. Mm. Ah, nah. But I see, because Man United was also another team that made me lose money. Like you see, this weekend, I lo- I lo- you know when you try your luck, I lost ten grand because of Man United. They drew, and look at looking at the teams that I had chosen, all the other teams won, and then Man United got there and drew with Watford. You know, like like I I, I would even send you the slip uh, on your WhatsApp so you see when I'm like. These teams, I they killed me, but oh well. What can we say? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I can't see myself gambling with Man United at this point in time. You don't gamble, with it. maybe under Selex. You know, it, it worked perfectly during the the Selex time, but now I would not, I would not bet them. Like this is this is this is why I think I left betting because I know they're always gonna put Man United. Um, in the you know, because they know we have very unpredictable sides, so we're more likely to lose our bets. When you expect them to win, they lose. When you expect them to lose, they win. When you expect them to win or lose, they draw. You understand? So they're consistently inconsistent. You understand? So um, it is what it is. But yeah, man, moving on to um, the league, the league games that took place, man, and horrible. Horrible, horrible worst case scenario has like happened on the weekend, you know. And all our rivals won. All, all, all our compet- competitors for top four won their games. Arsenal, uh, quality game from them. Um, they, they, they played when they played Wolves. I don't know how they, they, they. I don't know how they won that game, obviously, and. But you know they came back from one nil down to two, and I, I honestly do think they make him top five because you know they they're showing fight, they're showing consistency, and like you expect Arsenal to choke, you know you expected them to choke these games, but they're winning, they keep winning. So 
you know, for, for you to, for us to ignore them and say they won't make top four, you know, it's being naive because we know we can't even beat what for that home. So how are we going to get Champions League? And let's not forget that there's, we've, we've got fi- a fixture, a terrible fixture list on the way. The next three games are just terrible. Like they're beyond. So I don't see us making it out of those three games, the next three games with Man City. Maybe we might. You never know. We might get something out of the City game because it's unexpected, right? You know, nobody expects us to get anything. But, yeah, man, tell me about Arsenal because I'm, I'm, I'm worried, man. Arsenal are going in the right direction. Yeah, I won't lie. I'm with you in terms of being worried with, you know, Man United and how they've been playing and the teams that we're currently competing with for the top four. Because right now, we've put ourselves in a pickle because it's not only just one team, but it's three teams that can put us off the top four. And two of those teams still have game in hand. So that's where the issue is. Arsenal doesn't seem like they'll be dropping any points. Unless if they might drop points against Chelsea, because Chelsea is also in a pickle. Chelsea, they might yeah. they are top three right yeah. now, but uh, looking at what's this, the league games that they have to play, they are playing with big teams. And if they lose, I mean, they're playing with Arsenal. Arsenal, one way or another, they want to win the game because they want the top four. Chelsea wants to remain in the top four, right? So it's one of those things that As- the Arsenal does, doesn't have anything to lose, actually. They haven't been in the top four for so long. And because of that, their fans are relaxed, even the players. You know when you have that feeling of we have nothing to lose. We're just playing good football and things that seem to be going our, our way. So that's what's happening with Arsenal right now. Arsenal, because unlike us, we are under pressure. Remember, we spent all the money that, we, that we've, we've spent. We've been uh, in the top four for the past three seasons. And right now we have other top players that we've bought. And us not qualifying for the top four. It's pressure for us, right? That's what I'm saying. With Arsenal, they are not under pressure because last season they did not qualify for the top four, and they're just playing football. That's what that is what is happening with Arsenal, and what is happening with Arsenal should have been what should have been what uh, happened with Man United. Because check how uh, even Arteta has handled the situation with certain players. You don't want to play. You act like you're bigger than the team. You're out. And that is one uh, situation that we are not doing in the United. And that's why right now, all, all the players that are playing for Arsenal, they know you either play or you're gone. You know, and that's like they actually play. And they have so many young players, Smith Rowe, Saka, Odegaard. These are players for the future. If they continue playing proper football with a coach that, that understands the players and the players understand the coach, they can just add, because right now, I feel like all they need to add is a good striker. That's it. If they add a good striker when the season finishes, they're in a they're they're in a better position than us. Because right now, Man United shambles. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how we're doing it. We still need to get a new coach or a, a new manager. I mean, shambles. Arsenal has an identity right now. They have a manager who knows what what he want he wants from the players, and the players are going out there and they're doing that. You know. So I won't lie to you. I'm with you in that basket of being s- afraid of what Arsenal is doing. And the worst part is that I'm afraid of Arsenal. There's also a Tottenham. There's also West Ham. West Ham won. We drew. They might still be behind us, but the problem is that it's not like they're behind us by like six, eight, or ten points. It might be what three points. I think it's three points, if not four. With, with yeah. West Ham. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You see, and then, like I said, we also have a Tottenham coming up, and with them, they're inconsistent, if you want to call it that. But just like Arsenal, they have nothing to put them under pressure. Last season, they didn't qualify for the top four, so right now it's one of those things. If they don't, it's chill. They pushed. They used to be down there, remember, and they pushed. Right now. They're here. They've arrived. And if they continue playing good... Because remember, we are going to play Tottenham. If we lose against them... for Already it's forget about the top four. Even though I had, yeah. a, let's say, a comment from uh, Bruno saying the way that we play during the weekend, 
uh, we can forget about that spot. And I'm like, that spot, number three, when we can't even keep number four, you know. I was like, okay, cool. The guy might, might have uh, so much belief and balls or whatever you want to call it. But we can't even, because top, uh, what's this? Number four is not ours. It's not really ours. Because there's teams behind us that can kick, her, kick us off anytime. We don't, we don't even need to play. Right now, if Arsenal gets to play all their game in hand, and we don't even need to play, they will just surpass us nicely. So now what we need to do, it means we need to beat the teams that are behind us. You see the pressure now we've put ourselves in. We need to beat Arsenal. We need to beat a West Ham if we want to play them again for a second round. We need to beat Tottenham. We need to beat those teams just to at least put breaks on them, you know, where we have a say in it. But I, I don't know, fam. Like, like I said, with Arsenal, they're actually playing good. They're actually playing as a, like a team that actually wants to get into the top four and just fuck shit up. That's what I'm seeing. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying that the way they are playing, yeah, because you've seen, even when they play against these big teams, your Man City, whatever, the way they play is exciting. You know, with Man United, I don't even really know if when we go play Man City, like you mentioned, if we want to get there, but knowing Man United, we probably get there, beat all the big teams. Probably get there, beat Man City 2 0. Get to Tottenham, beat them 3 1. You know, that, that's the type of team we are. Get to Liverpool, maybe beat them 1 0. That's the type of team we are right now. We are so inconsistent. You don't know how it's going to go. When you expect to win, you get a draw or a loss. When you expect to lose, you get a win. So, like you said, and I fully agree with you, it's like we don't really know what type of team. Uh, or what type of play we were going to, you really don't know. It's like even if they change two, three players, we don't know. But with Arsenal, you know, whoever's supporting Arsenal, Arsenal right now, even though they are my oppositions and I like making fun of them, but they are in a better position than us right now. No, well, well said, man. And, you know, um, obviously this whole thing with Ateta wasn't a joke. Because we were making fun of it in the beginning, saying, you know, trust the process. You know, I never asked no loss. You know, I'd go on AFTV and, you know, I'd, 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 I'd laugh. You know, I'd type out, I'd type out, hey, don't say it. Trust the process. You know, I'd do that because they, they used to do that to us with social as well. They're like, no, oh, trust the process. So whenever I said I was doing badly. But, you know, it shows that they have a plan, which is scary to, to even think about. It. Whereas us, Man United, we don't even know where we stand. We don't even, you know, we're in the, we're in the dark. We don't know what the, eight, the next 18, men, 18 months holds for us, you know, as a fan base. And that's what's frustrating, you know. And, yeah, and obviously Spurs had their own problems with Conte. You know, Conte came out that time when they when, when, when Spurs lost. And he was like, um, you know, maybe I'm not good enough, uh, me and the board me and the club need to talk about this you know one something has to be one has to give you know he was he said that out, out you know with that outburst and Spurs responded by winning 4-0 and ultimately putting Bielsa out of a job because Leeds apparently sacked him he's no longer the manager at Leeds so yeah Spurs looking they're looking fresh man they're looking they, they, they you know at, at this point I'm worried man we might not even make the Europa League. We might end up being in the conference. <laughs> you know, we might be in the conference league, you know, and that's the worst, worst possible. We're going to be playing teams I've never heard of, you know, um, but it is what it is, man. Um, it's, it's, it's sad for us. Sad for us. us. Can I say something with, you, with what you just said? So, someone said, uh, I think I saw this on Twitter or something. Someone was like, uh, Man United is closer to the bottom than they than they are to securing the top three or the top four, and it made me laugh because, like, if you look at the number of points that we have and the way we're playing, we're closer to the bottom than we are going up. And like you said, imagine we end up in the Conference League, that would be an embarrassment. Like we were laughing at Barcelona for dropping to the Europa League. So that would be the, the lowest, lowest drop ever. Because even if you win that trophy, 
do you celebrate it? Like, we, we can even foresee uh, what is going to be set up at Man United. They waited for, for a cup to be created for, for them, for them to actually win something. That is what will be coming towards us. Because they just recently created the Conference League. And they will definitely like be like, the way Man United has dropped off, they are now playing Conference League. Like, how do you even celebrate that? Like, I don't even know. I feel like if we do get into like Conference League, they should just play the kids. That's how I feel. If we get to such a position, forget about playing your main strikers, main defenders, main middle field or goalkeeper. Play the kids from start of the, of the tournament until finish. I would rather the kids get that type of experience in playing in Europe, even though we're playing against teams we don't know, compared to putting a rush forward to play and score a three, a score a head trick against, against a team we don't know. Because you, you know how they like putting a spin where Rashford goes and scores a head trick and like, Rashford scored a head trick. Yara, yara, yara. No. I'd rather we play the kids. All those kids who get loaned or who are not even get, get, getting into the bench because we have trash players who are even closing space for those kids. I'd rather they play them. And this is, this is a messed up part. Man United can actually feel players that we can't even fold for the whole season and field for a, 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 a new type of trophy if they want. Conference League, field those players. You know, I mean, the Conference League is a joke, man. I mean, um, you know, if I... I'm not even going to watch it. I'm sorry, I'm not like I'm not going to watch our games in the Conference League. I mean, even... You know, you know how bad the competition is if even Spurs themselves, you know, they, they, they forfeited. They forfeited being not like they, they they literally got themselves out of the competition. They found a loophole and they got kicked out of it on purpose, you know. And I mean, why would anyone be proud to even be associated with, with, with that competition, you know? And now uh, you could just see the memes, you know. You can see the memes now. I, I could I, I can actually see them now, bro. And they're like, yo, many nights are so bad that someone had to create a trophy for them, you know, so so they could win something, you know. That's how bad we are known. So, you know, in instances, it's good because the Glazers lose out on the Champions League money and they'll maybe start taking things seriously when they, when they see that they lost a lot of money. Um, and plus, coupled with the fact that, obviously, we, we dropped our sponsor, we, we terminated our sponsor, our, our, our sponsor from Russia. So that's, lo- that's money already lost in our part. Um, so, so you mean couple, which one? Couple. Team View. No, not Team View. No, not uh, Team View. Um, it's a, 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 you know, maybe you know, these guys, maybe these guys keep up their own pass. Own pass. But mm. the thing is, when it comes to our board, the Glazers, they, they really don't care. And the reason I'm saying that, so I remember someone once sent this picture, right, of the Man United circle, how we do our things, where we get a new coach, we buy maybe a few players, uh, we managed to play, maybe reach the Champions League. If the coach doesn't reach the Champions League, it's like every time we start again. And I remember around that time, m- most of the fans were complaining. Why not do what you want to do by getting all the right players at the right time? Instead of having to buy... Because this, this is what has been happening with Man United. We've always known we need a CDM. But instead, we don't buy one. For the past two, three seasons, we've needed a CDM. But we don't buy one. And then what happens? When the season ends and we play the crap season, you will hear, Man United are looking forward to be buying a new striker, a new middle fielder, a new this. And then what happens when it's the transfer? We'll sign one player and then we'll sign players that we never thought we were going to sign. You know, like for example, when Man United went on, when we needed Sancho and then they went on to sign Pelestri and signed uh, Diallo, I was shocked. Because I was like, how do you go and waste money on players you don't need while you can use that money for play for a player that you need? You know, like right now, when we went and bought uh, Cristiano, 
we always knew we needed a CDM. But what happened? We went and bought Varane, we bought Sancho, mm. and then after doing all of that, and then we bought Cristiano. Before we bought Sancho, we knew we needed a CDM. Yeah. But like I yeah. said, the way the team is set up, the priorities are not getting uh, sorted. Instead, we're signing uh, players that are going to sell shirts. You know, because we could have could have literally went on to firstly get a CDM first. CDM could have cost us maybe 20 million, 15 or 10. Because right now there were two players that, that could have cost us 10 million to play CDM. But instead we didn't go and, and got this and, and like get those players. And if you look at the, the, the game we played on we played on weekend with Watford, look at how match is played. And you see why we always say we need a CDM. He actually played a great game as a CDM because he is one. But the issue is that he doesn't have the legs anymore. So we always do that same thing. It's a, it's a continuous cycle. They will fire a, a manager, get another one. I'll find a picture for you and send it to you. They will fire a manager, and then after firing a manager, you'll hear the board saying, we're going to give the manager all he wants, and then they don't. I mean, we've had Van Gaal, we've had Moyes, we've had who else? Uh, who who was, was our manager? We've had Mourinho. We've even had, I think, who's this? Ole. O obviously, Ole was like a puppet. He wouldn't come out and say that the, the board was, was killing him. But this team managed, this other team managed that I've mentioned. We've had them complain that I wanted such a player. They never gave me such a player. I want to imagine to hear that Man United wanted Cruz, wanted Muller, wanted Sergio Ramos, you know. Wanted, I think at one point we even wanted Kimmich before these players made it. We wanted Casemiro, but we never went and got those players because what's going to happen all the time? The board they don't want to get you the players you want, instead, they'll get you a fit choice that you were not even thinking of. And then the player gets there. What happens to the player? He's trash because it's the same thing with Maguire. Maguire was not the first choice we wanted, but they went and signed Maguire for 80 million while there were other players that we, we needed. Right, there was so, Ruben Diaz. You see? You see? So that's where the problem is. We 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 always missing the, 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 the chance to elevate the team to a better position. You know, because like I said, it's a continuous circle. You see if Man United do not make it to the Champions League for next season, you'll see. The new manager will come in, they will sign almost all the players that he wants. By the time it's getting off, you're not signing exactly, or you're signing the player when it's too late. They might go right now and sign a CDM. And what will be the funny part is that they will, they will go and sign a CDM that is very costly. Man United, they, they don't know how to save. That's why I'm like, I'm confused when it comes to this board. You say you love money, right? Uh, you run Man United as a, as a business, but you can't even run that business. And what I'm saying is that if you're running a business, you always want to save and make profit. But you go and waste money on even the wrong players that won't even bring back that profit. Maguire is the same as wasting money because how long have you been complaining about Maguire? He's not hitting th th those, those points they want him to hit. You know? And we signed him for, for 80 million. For that 80 million, we could have gotten two center backs and maybe even a CDM if we wanted. Better players that are even cheaper. But instead, this is what I'm saying. You'll see. Man United will go and buy a CDM that is 60 million. Even 70, because we've been chasing rice for the longest time. And I feel like you know, there's, a, there's better CDMs than rice, Deathlan rice. But you'll see what will happen. They'll go sign Deathlan rice for that 70 million. And then after that happens, they'll start delaying and going to buy another player. Because right now, I can definitely say, okay, if you want to go get another striker who will give Cristiano, let's say, a, a breeder, if you want to put it like that, or a striker that will play with Cristiano up front. You can definitely get such a striker, depending on how the manager, the new manager who's going to be coming wants to play. But instead, you'll see, that's why I end up being like, uh, the decisions that are made with players we buy, it's not really the, uh, the, the manager's choice. Right now, we're talking about Deathland Rice. We haven't even gotten a manager yet, but we're talking about Deathland Rice. That is not Pochettino or Ten Hag choosing um, a, man, uh, what's this, a player. You see... This is the board choosing players that they know that, okay, if you get such a player, because the fans have been crying about such a player, uh, we've done our job. But instead, you're wasting money. You leave a player that is 20 million. Because, uh, for example, we've mentioned 
Bisoma from uh, uh, Brighton, we've mentioned Neves, who's also a, a CDM. Those two players are cheaper. Even Party, who plays for Arsenal right now, when Arsenal signed him, I remember Man United, there was a mention of him. But we never went to buy him. And Arsenal bought him for, I think it was 50 million. And you see he's doing the job. But uh, like I said, Man United, we always miss the chance. Yeah, man, and you know, I can I can already see it happening. I, I, and these fans, the thing is, they're the ones who are uh, advocating this as well. So they're not helping, you know. I feel like the fan base is hurting the club more than we're actually trying to help ourselves. Because, you know, you get these guys on all on um, on social media or on these uh, YouTube channels saying, we must go and get rice. Oh, rice is the only one. You know, he's Premier League proven, he's whatnot. You know how, what they say, these guys. And West Ham came out and said that they, 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 they're going to, you know, his price tag is going to be something like 100 million pounds. For what? For what? And then you, you'll see, because people will be like, he's going to go to Chelsea, he's going to go to this, he's going to go to that. He, he can go there. I'm not, if, if it means we're going to pay 100 million, because I know this club, what they do, they'll pay that 100 million. And then they'll, 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 they'll be sluggish in terms of getting other recruitments because they've already spent so much money already. You understand? And we all know that's, that's, that's the story. Get the person, shirt seller, uh, maybe British, um, the guy who has a British passport who costs, uh, you know, whatever, whatever million, you know, breaks the record for Grealish because that's what the Glazers want. They're going to be on some, oh, now we've got the British, we in our position, we've got someone who's, um, who, who, yeah, who's got yeah, the who's got record the for the record. Just much, 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 Let's say other English teams are looking at even with Maguire. Remember that Man City wanted Maguire. Yeah, this, Man City yeah, this, had, yeah, refused to pay the amount that Leicester City wanted, and he ended up going to us. And this is the same thing that would happen with Declan Rice. No one is going to pay that hundred uh, million apart from us, because that's how dumb uh, our recruitment team or the board, whoever you want to to put in the box, you know. Because, like I said. We shouldn't have paid 80 million. Men City were like 80 million. Even, I think, was it also Liverpool? Because remember, Van Dijk was injured. They were like 80 million. They dropped out. But we still continued and pushed to go and get this player. Chelsea won't play 100 million for Rice. They, they won't. And the reason I'm saying that, if you look at Chelsea right now, Chelsea has about, because those players are original sets up, what's this? CDMs. Kante, Jorginho. Kovacic. Those players already, three of them, I mean, I know that they get to play, They who's this, uh, the coach put all three of them a chance to play. But if you look at their style of play, it's the type of player we, we are missing. If you could get one of those players, Man United would be better. If you could get Kante or get Jorginho or get Kovacic, would be a better team. But they have three and they're looking to buy another player. So that's what I'm saying. I don't see them spending 100 million. Even though Declan Rice is a Chelsea fan, I don't see them. But what what do Man United do? They'll go get him, pay 100 million, and then after paying 100 million, and then they'll start uh, slacking off and signing the other players that the, the manager needs. So it's it's a continuous circle. We did the same thing with Maguire. Uh, we did the same thing with Juan Pisaka. We did the same thing uh, with Sancho. And every time we do that, mis- we make that mistake. We then a uh, a falter on the other side. We can't sign the other players that we need, you know. Because mm-hmm. you're talking about Declan Rice right now. If we go and buy Declan Rice for that 100 million, and then let's say Declan, Declan Rice gets injured after two, three games, it's the same way as we're going back to our original squad. Because already we don't have a proper CDM. We buy one CDM for 100 million, he gets injured. We're back to, to, to square one. And to me, it's confusing because it's like, why not take that 100 million, go buy three players, buy two CDMs, buy maybe a strike if you need a striker. 
That way you know if Deadland Rice, because obviously he's gonna be played uh, so so many times. He'll be played like he will be tired. That's one thing I know because he'll be the only original CDM who actually play better. Yeah. So if he's injured, yeah. it means reverting back to uh, Fred McTominay, which is crap right now. You know, so that's the other thing. You pay so much money for one player, and if they get injured, what happens? It means your season is over. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, man, um, it's it's stupid and pointless to be honest. And honestly, I'm 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 close to giving up. If I see them even do that, because I can I can actually see them go and do something as stupid as that, as to spend a hundred uh to to buy Declan Rice for a hundred million and then. You know, Declan Rice gets injured, or you know, has to be rested, or something happens, and with we 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 we're literally gonna be back to to the way we are this season and the other seasons prior because that's all it takes. You know, football is not guaranteed, so you need to. I'd rather uh, buy um, get two CDMs for that price than to buy one. You understand? I'd rather get someone who's cheap because there's a lot of them who are cheap. You can find them in. In, in these leagues, you know, I mean, your Kante, your Kante was bought from, from a second division team in France. You understand when, 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 you, when Leicester bought it. So the scouting needs to be, um, needs to work, needs to finally get its um, thing. You understand? They need to get their house in order. But I feel like the thing is, we do have a good scouting system. The problem is I've, I've heard rumors that, um, I've heard rumors that like, like they they, they they don't have much power or say, you know when they when they tell the club advise the club you go for this side of player he fits the mold of the team he's cheap he's this the the, the club is like no we don't want him we want someone who's who's gonna sell shirts because that's all they care about you know and it's sad man so I could see us going for rice and people will still blame blame our scouting system and saying it's, it's our scouting I, I think it's the club. Man. I think it's the club who are making these decisions, obviously. And obviously, and they're like, no, not yeah. true. It's the next, true. It's the next, it's the next So, so I can see, I can see, it. It. and we'll be here and we'll next, be here. Week, next week. Oh, bro! Fighting for the four. Because talking about what, what you're saying, we lost out on two players when it was the transfer. Kamara yeah. was cheaper. Yeah. Zakaria, who went to Juventus, was cheaper. And you see what Zakaria is doing uh, with Juventus. He's scoring left and right. And he's a CDM that we needed. We didn't want to pay six million. Six. And what happened? Apparently, like what you're saying, there were rumors that came out. They were like, no, he doesn't look like the right fit. Uh, uh, and it's not on the, 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 the scouts. The scouts have done their job. Now, the board or whoever has the power to go by doesn't want to go by. Like I said, Kamara, uh, who else? Like I said, Zakaria. There's also Chomini, who was mentioned last season. Uh, there's always players, and he's playing in France as well, I think. There's always players that we can actually buy on a cheap, but we won't. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know how, like, I, I'm, yeah, like I'm, I'm tired of it because it's the thing of, us as the fans, we see it. We're like, you know what? Even if I don't know this player, and then you go check him out, you actually see that he's, he, the player is what is missing with the Man United. If such a player gets put in the Man United team, you foresee what might happen or how the, chi, the team might be changed. But no, the board or the team itself will say, no, this player doesn't fit. I was shocked when they said that. I was like, what do you mean it doesn't fit? It's not like we have players already in the team that fit. But you still play them. We have Fred, we have McTominay. These players have been playing crap since. And they were the reason why a player like Van de Beek did not even get a chance to actually play. And you see what this player is doing when he's playing for, for Everton. He's actually playing great. He's defending. He's passing. He's intercepting. You know, yesterday, Lampard decided to sub Van de Beek off. And what happened? They scored Everton. You know, you see that uh, such a player who knows what he, he, he's doing. But Man United were not even playing him. And that's what I'm saying. So many players, like Kamavinga, for example, he was on a cheap. 
But what did Man United do? We didn't, and the, the, that's one thing that pisses me, pisses me off actually. When I look at all the young players who are on a cheap, who can buy, and we decide on not buying them. Because, like I said, Kamavinga was on a cheap. We could have actually went and bought Kamavinga, right? He would have been a different type of player to fit in that position. But no, we didn't go and buy the player. And he's playing for Madrid right now. And already Madrid had great players already. But they saw the future. This is the reason why Madrid will never fall as, as a team. Because you look at players like Vinicius, like Rodrigo. When Vinicius go to Madrid, people were complaining. He's not playing good. He's, he's doing this, he's doing that. But he needed more game time, a chance to play. And what's happening now? He's their, he's, he's their uh, better player this season. He's playing better than almost everyone. And there were even rumors that uh, some of the players refused to pass him the ball when Zidane was still there. Because he used to try to take on players and he would miss on trying to take on... They would always take the ball away from him. He was doing what Rashford has been doing. Take the ball, think you can dribble past three, four players or shoot from out of nowhere and then they take the ball away from him. But right now, if he doesn't assist, he scores. You know? And that's what I'm saying. Madrid is doing all of these things. They are getting those young players that no one else is seeing. You know, even if you use a Liverpool, Liverpool went and got Luis Diaz. I won't even lie and say I knew about the player. I did not. I don't want to lie. I did not know about the player. I thought they were talking about another Luis Diaz because I was thinking of a defender, only to find out they are talking about a, a forward. You know, and that's what is confusing me. Right now, even what's this? When we had a chance to sign that striker that Man City signed, but we decided not to sign him because why? Apparently, the board or whoever is in charge of this was like, no, he's not the right fit. How are you going to say he's not the right fit when a, a team like Man City? Right. The right fit. Exactly. Who is the right fit then? So, so that's why it's confusing. We are missing a chance on all these young players. Because uh, check uh, when PSG went and got Mbappe. Mbappe was the type of player who was not known as much when he played for Monaco. They got him. Mm. And what, what is happening now? Young players actually great. Players like Hakimi. L like, I'm trying to show you an example of those young players. Hakimi, you know, he's actually playing great right now. Even for his national team, he is great. You look at players like, if you go to, like, there's so many, fam. And that's why I'm usually pissed off. Like, right now, for AC Milan has, is it Brahimi Diaz, who is a Madrid player? He is messing shit up there. He's playing. And that's why I'm like, Man United are always missing the chance of getting a young player. Right now, there's also, a, I think it's a right back. He plays for Norwich. Is it right back or left? I think it's Aaron something. You know? Yeah. He's a good right, player. Yeah. He's a right player. Yeah. We also have Lamti. Young, good player. Most of, of our fans are seeing that, you know what? That player in a team like Man United or Man City, he would fuck shit up. But yet our team are set there on the sidelines, relaxed, like we have uh, our shit figured out. We don't. And we, we're seeing, like I'm saying, we're seeing all of these young players, you know. And right now we have, uh, is it Williams who we loaned out to Norwich? He is actually playing great for Norwich. But if we do not get the right type of coach, what would happen? He won't even come back to play. Instead, we'll probably sell him or loan him again and then we end up going to buy another left back. Because right now we have Alex, uh, Alex, Alexis uh, Tellers, we have Shaw. But I feel like Shaw is, tra is crap when it comes to crossing. He can play good, but when he has to cross, lately I don't know what's, what's up with him. When he has to cross, he can't. He does some other weird, weird stuff that he's doing. So that's what I'm saying. We always miss that chance. We see young players who are playing. You know, it's like when we lost out on Haaland and when we lost out on Bellingham. Those were young players that we didn't really push enough to get them. You know, and I feel like they made the right right decisions, those players, because the way Man United was playing under Ole, Ole's playing the same type of players. Even if Rashford was playing crap, Rashford was still playing the game. Even if Maguire was playing crap, Maguire was still playing the game. So imagine a Bellingham. Uh, who is a young player who wants to play now? A player like Haaland who wants to play now, staying in the bench. You're ruining this player's football. A player like uh, Dia Ahmad Diallo. That's a player I feel at a team like Dortmund would have really prospered and played good. But instead, he was chilling there in the bench, not playing. 
when he got the chance to play, he scored, assisted, but still not playing. And it's like, okay, what what is the plan? And the, the, the messed up part, we're talking about young players. We do have young players that we can actually use, but we don't. Instead, we're going to buy old crocs like Maguire, who can who can even really play. Because if you look at the team, it's like I think we spoke about this last time. How do we sign our players? Don't we look at the right fit, looking at how we want to play? It's like we just sign a player. If you look at how you want to play, you don't go and get a, a player like Maguire. Because we wanna mm-hmm. we wanna play a game that is quick, you know. But we went and bought a Maguire, and you can see how it when Maguire has the ball. Maguire holds on to the ball too much. He doesn't get the ball moving. And then you look at a Lindelof. When Lindelof has the ball, he's like, I'm going. Let's go. He'll even carry the, 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 the opposition players like he's a, a right back or like he's a, he's a right wing. But he's not. But he's able to cut through, go. And what he's doing is what we've usually seen even Van Dijk. If you look at Liverpool, Van Dijk takes the ball and is up the field. And you're like, hey, if a mistake, any mistake happens here, Van Dijk is screwed, but it never happens because they put yeah. so much pressure like yeah. that and Van Dijk can, can run. If you get to uh, win the ball from Liverpool, Van Dijk can run and actually get the ball before you even thought about scoring. Man United, if Man United loses the ball, forget about Maguire winning the ball. You know he's slow. Yeah. Yeah. They don't call him a fridge uh, for fun. The ones who call him a fridge, they know why they call him a fridge. He can't run. Instead, he ends up fouling. I like me. Me, I'm going to choose. You know my team. Yeah, ne, I. I am cartel, bro. Like when it comes to Man United, I am cartel. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, know you can say that again. Um, obviously, you know, um, shifting our worries a little bit to other teams. Yeah, nah, um, obviously that was the Carabao final. Um, Chelsea lost to Liverpool in penalties, and it was a great spectacle of football you know at least you know there's something to cheer a person up you know after watching the draws i watched with man united you know um yeah man and what did you think about the game because hey, both teams were fighting man. it was at times it was, at even times it was even trying to trying to do um was technically trying to do um jorgen club so it was like it was a very good good match to watch with, with two amazing coaches man. And yes, uh, congratulations to Liverpool, even though I don't like saying it. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, what did you think about that game? Yeah, man, like you've just said, I want to repeat those. Congrats to Liverpool, even though Vela, we do not like it. As a Man United fan, you never want to see Liverpool always winning trophies while we're just lacking behind. I can't even say we're slacking behind because we are way behind. So me saying slacking behind is like, we are competing with Liverpool. We're not competing with Liverpool. Com- Liverpool is way, way better than us. So, congrats mm-hmm. to them. And yeah, like you said, that game was a great game of football. We got to just... That's what I was saying earlier on. It's like, uh, as much as I support I Man United, I'm someone who supports football first. And it was great to just sit and watch a great football, football game against two great teams with two great coaches. You could see they were going at each other. No one was trying to defend. They were going. But you could see mm. that it wasn't easy to score. And it's not that they didn't attack each other. They did. But they hit poles and all that situation. But they were playing. And the game was exciting. You know, and that's all as a fan you can ask for. If you're supporting one of those teams, even if the game finishes and you didn't win the trophy. But you can definitely say it was a great game of football. Your team showed, you know, Prowess actually go and fight for the game and try and win the game and try and win the trophy. You know, unlike a team that just gets there and is relaxed, they're just trying to defend. So it was a great game. It could, like I said, if it wasn't for, you know, how the penalties went, you know, it was still a great game. It's just that uh, both teams couldn't score, you know, because they have great defense, you know, because th- that's another thing that people t- uh, tend to uh, not pay attention is that. When both teams have a great defense, you think that the that strikers couldn't score, but it's that the, the defense itself is that strong, you know. Mm. So it was a great game, and yeah, Chelsea could have won it if their goalkeeper maybe managed to stop one goal or managed to score, because the whole the whole penalties could have started from scratch if uh, Kepa managed to score his penalty, but he couldn't. 
you know, which then cost the team, you know, the, the trophy. But apart from that, yeah, it was a very nice, tight game. I enjoyed it, like I said, despite the fact that I do not support both teams. My old man supports the Chelsea, so I was chilling with him, watching a Chelsea. And I would have wanted Chelsea to win because I think uh, Liverpool, they are more of rivals. But like I said, it didn't matter. Both teams are not my teams, but it was a great, you know, great watch, man, yeah. No, definitely, man. And uh, shout out to both teams uh, for giving us a wonderful game, and, you know, for helping us close off the weekend on a high. But yeah, man, um, we're going to wrap it up quickly with the, the few fixtures in La Liga that took place. Um, Soso's team, Barcelona, is back, you know, from, from the dead. You know, um, obviously, Abomeyang, you know, um, was on fire. Um, Barcelona just. They're looking good, man. They're looking relaxed at the moment. Dembele came on, you know, um, after being, you know, given given the vote of confidence by 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 Shav, and he's he's starting to look like the old player he used to be. And obviously, man, um, Barcelona were just were just on fire, you know. Um, the style of play has improved. You know, they're starting to look like their old selves and. The players they bought seem to be also working because I feel like I might have been a little bit harsh in saying they were just buying for the sake of buying, you know. Um, but it's clear that they had a plan. It's clear that Xavi had a plan. He knew what he wanted to do with these players. And this is the kind of manager, obviously, at Man United we we want. We know that the manager is going to come in and he's going to know what to do with these players, regardless. You know what I'm saying? So. Xavi, and another thing what I like about Xavi is that he's not afraid to bench players. If you're not playing well, you get benched. I feel like this is what's creating that competitiveness within the, 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 the Barca squad. Everyone knows that if they play well, they're going to play. If you don't play well, you're out of the team. You know, Whereas that doesn't exist purely at Man United. We don't have that. But yeah, shout out to Barcelona. I'm sure Celso is happy now. And you know, I would have loved to hear him say uh, a few words, obviously, with regards to that. But did you did you manage to catch the game? Because I only catch I only caught it in the second half. You know. Um, I I didn't get the chance to catch the game actually, but I did check out you know the results and a bit of highlights. And um, mm. yeah, like you were saying, <clears throat> Barcelona are coming coming back, man. And it's it, it, these are, are signs. When the team is a well-run uh, run team, and I would put it like this, it was only a year ago, or maybe a few months ago, when everyone else in the world was saying Barcelona are in trouble because of mm. how costly some of their players are and how much they pay them, uh, you know. And they managed to turn it around. All it needed was a good coach and a proper management. And a good board. So the difference w- w- with the Barcelona is that the press, whoever who is the president at, at that time, you don't get to be there for life. That's a good part with such teams. Your Madrid, the, the presidents get voted in, you know. Because if you look at right now, the person who decided to bring back Xavi is a new president who came in when he was voted in after they got rid of the one who was the president. And because of that, a lot of decisions changed on how. Barcelona were focused, how they were structured and focused. So immediately they uh, managed to get those decisions right and they got Xavi. They started changing. And that is what is needed with the Man United. Because I feel like with the Man United, you can go and get whatever coach or manager that you need. But if the guys up top are still crap, there's nothing you can really do. Because, and I'll use an example. Like I said before, we end up talking about the Man United, but it's a, it, it, you end up finding comparisons when you use different teams. With the Man United, right? Uh, if I feel like right now, Ralph cannot do what Xavi is doing now because he's an interim. There's certain decisions he cannot take. You know, like for example, if he really wants to keep Maguire in the bench and take away his armband, he can't because he's an interim. Already Maguire has a power over him and he's an interim. He's not like the main coach. But I feel like if he was the main coach, certain decisions would be easy for him to make, you know, like how he wants the start of play to be. 
because now he ended up reverting back to how Man United ha- have been playing. Because when he tried to get get them to play his way, they couldn't. And it's like they couldn't because some refused to play that way. Because you saw when there were legs, like you, you were speaking about legs, when there were so many legs, certain players are just refusing. They were cry, they are cry babies. They're refusing to listen to what the coach is saying or the manager and playing that way. With Xavi, gets there to Barcelona, tells uh, the management how he wants to play, tells them what the type of players that he wants to play, keeps the type of players that he doesn't want in the bench, you know. And and you can see the style of play. They're now coming back to how they used to play with some improvement, you know. And this is a coach that just got in now. And if you look at the amount of time he's had with Barcelona, Ralph could have achieved the same thing only if he had full control of the team. But he doesn't. If you do not have full control, you would see with certain decisions that are made. And people are going to come back and say, yeah, when it comes to leaving certain players in the bench, how many times has Cristiano been left in the bench since he's come back to, to, to Man United? And sometimes when he was left in the bench, most of the fans came back and said that was the wrong decision because certain uh, chances, some were like, Cristiano could have done a better job there. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, People just choose to speak because they can speak. It's like people don't analyze the game or do not analyze certain decisions that are taken, you know. Because like I said, Xavi right now managed to get two, three players on a loan and the players that are already in the team, he's getting them to play. And right now, I remember seeing a, a quote from Abu Mayang saying, he's been asking Tembele every day, please stay, you know. And remember, they've played together, these guys, with Dortmund. So if he manages to convince him to stay, Xavi is even in a better position because he doesn't have to now go buy a player to cover that, that, that spot. He can just work with the players, players that he has and just improve how they were playing. And then after that, all he can he can just do, add a few players that he doesn't have. That's all he has to do. And already they are playing much better. You can see an identity that he's trying to create. You know, because he's the main coach. He's not an interim, you know, he's there to stay. And the decisions that he's making are decisions that are going to benefit him in the, in the future. If he chooses and says, I want to play this way, and he starts implementing those decisions and that style of play, it makes it easier for even the, the players to understand and play his way. And they respect him, like I said, they respect the guy. He's played for uh, Barcelona before. He was their captain. He's won so many trophies with them. And because of that, the, the players respect him. He's a right fit for Barcelona, right? With us, we don't have the type of, let's say, former player that you can say is a right fit because no former player of ours is actually coaching good right now. Well, I can count one, but I feel like where he is right now, he, he doesn't have enough Rooney. He doesn't have enough for me to say, they must get Rooney to be the manager. He doesn't, you know. Yeah. He still needs to have another team that he can coach, and then we'll see. Because right now, he's coaching to keep Deby in the championship, you know. But if he manages, let's say, to stay up and then another team gets him, then maybe you can see, you know, a player that you can be like, you know what? He's showing what, what he wants to do, and we can get him. But right now, we just need a whole different coach we have we need different coaches and a manager that will come in and just do something different that we've never done and remove the players that feel that uh, are bigger than the team. We all know them, you know, and that's what I feel Barcelona have, have done better. They've gotten as much as some people won't want to say it, but getting rid of uh, Messi, even though it wasn't probably their choice, but that, that was a great cho- uh, decision for them. Because getting rid of Messi meant now trying to play a whole different way. Instead of wanting to uh, play how Barcelona used to play because there's Messi. Now they're playing as a team. They're not relying on one player. And they're not structuring the team on just one player. You know. So that's, that's the thing. Barcelona, I feel like Barcelona will be competing for the league next season and Champions League. With the few players that they can add from what they have already. Because they didn't have a good striker. They have a right striker right now uh, when you look at Apomaya. And that's what I'm saying. They're in the right position to just continue growing and improving. And how they are playing, I, I foresee them finishing top four of it. You know, they might even finish top three 
or top two because the way they are playing, they keep getting points. And remember, Madrid and Sevilla have been dropping points. So if Barcelona continues winning, playing good, they might even end the season very strong. Yeah. No, uh, Sims, thanks thanks for joining me, man. And I'm going to have to cut it a little bit short. But thanks for joining me. I know you wanted, um, you didn't want to be here for like the longest time ever. But um, thanks again for joining me and, you know, for us wrapping up this two men this time. The others, the others uh, uh, didn't uh, manage to get in. But, you know, next week is another week and we're definitely going to, hopefully, hopefully it will be a better week for us as fans. But yeah, man, thanks again for joining Nah, man, it was just great, great. Uh, again, like I said, the podcast and looking at the team we have, I feel like the podcast is needed because, hey, Man United stresses you during the weekend when you're hoping for a good result. And then this is where we get to vent, you know, because like I said, uh, football is nice, but when your team loses, you're always going to be very pissed off. So in, when you get to discuss some of this uh, decisions that they say were made in the game, yeah, so yeah, man, it was awesome, and yeah, again when we do it, I mean, we always have an awesome one. So yeah, man. Pleasant, my Pleasant, we'll we'll next week. Ah, where, where? Good after week, man. You too, man. You too, man. Ah, where? Thanks, bro. All right, all right. We are. We are. Thank you.